This class of RC has been out for a long time, and I'm not sure it has an official name. Is it a scaler? Is it an adventure truck? Is it a crawler? Is it a trail truck? All I know is they're pretty damn rad. And right now we've collected four of the best RTR versions we can find to put them to the test and tell you which one you should spend your hard-earned money on. Let's get to it. Hit the beach. Here's a quick overview of each. The first one, the scale of the bunch, the RC four-wheel drive Trail Finder 2. The TF2 came equipped more towards scale, plastic body, smaller tires, and a leaf spring suspension. It's kind of like showing up to a knife fight with a banana, not even a gun. But overall, the chassis is pretty well designed. The motor out front makes a big difference in, in the trail because you want the motor over the wheels to add weight where you need it, especially when climbing. Uh, you get a lot of stuff in this. You get a transfer case, metal axles, so you're really equipped towards the scale side and it's ready to be upgraded. Yeah. The next contender came in weighing at a hefty seven and a half pounds. This was more of a mix of technology and scale. Uh, the TRX4 is loaded with technology. Portal axles, remote locking diffs, remote locking two speed. Uh, it just comes loaded with a lot of stuff and actually not for that much more money. Uh, the motor is leaning towards the front on the better side of the design. You can see the portal axles drop the ground clearance, huge, best in class. Um, here's another angle of them. It's really cool technology. It just basically puts transmissions on the wheels to help you get clearance. Center transmissions, two-speed remote shifting, like we said, and remote locking diffs, packed with technology. Is next, the Vatera Ascender. Uh, you can't really knock this truck, uh, except for the body may be a little bit too square. It's underneath is a standard crawler chassis. You got the center transmission, uh, plastic axles, locked hubs, decent tires, spectrum radio, nothing to really knock here. Uh, you do get a little bit of scale, you get the uh, center pumpkin which uh, has pretty good clearance. Axles look a little dorky and straight but hey, overall pretty good design. What we didn't like is that we had to find a special pack for this, this is a shorty. We're not too into that but hey, you know we had to go spend 50 bucks to make a run. Not a big deal, uh, servo out front. If RC four-wheel drive is a scale, axle has become the competition side of things. And the SCX-10 has exemplified what this class is all about. So it doesn't load you with tech, it's a pretty simple chassis. The layout is pretty straightforward. Everything's pushed towards the front, the battery's towards the front. Uh, revised geometry helps, a new pumpkin. Um, they did a lot of work on the suspension of this and in the competition it really showed. So this is the guy that's created the class and kept things going. Uh, one of the best you can ever have and it's still going to be the best one you can ever had and a lot of challenge here so let's get to it yeah. Leon vote please we have a tie for third why because the RC four-wheel drive while coming a little bit less equipped with technology smaller wheels uh, we really love the scale of this truck and how much it actually performed even kind of being the underdog with suspension that doesn't really move as you can see it kind of gets a little bouncy it's the scale part that we loved um, and going through our beginner stage, which was here, was uh, pretty good. Um, it ha handled the small climbs very well. You can see the tires, even though hard, stuck. Um, going up over this transition, you can see uh, when we get over it here that it's actually going to give a little cool slide. Um, but it did hold a very tight line on this, tighter than some of the other ones, even though it slid down. But uh, that front motor position really helps this truck. And when you put really good tires on it, it's actually going to make it actually even better. So, Part of the fun of this truck was that it's so scale that you look like you're running a 1990 hard body in, in the woods there. So um, when we got to the advanced course here, this is really where it showed off some of the flaws. Short wheelbase, small tires. Uh, it got up, over, but it just high centered a lot. And it couldn't even start stage two, so we eventually had to give it a little uh, helping hand from God above, or Ben as we call him. And uh, once we got over and into the rougher stuff, you're going to see that the suspension was, you know, limited. It's a leaf spring suspension. It's supposed to re look realistic, and it does. But in the real world, you probably wouldn't be crawling the Grand Canyon with this truck, even though it's lifted. Um, but it did okay. Coming up to this gnarly 90-degree plant turn, as we called it, um, you can see that, it, you know, it was hampered again. The hard body, while looks good, also can get stuck because it's got no flex and you're basically just stuck uh, pushing on it like you would in a real car. 
So I don't think he'd be making that turn uh, in real life, but you know, that was part of our game here. This is the advanced big boy section. And the TF2 was a little bit outclassed here. And even though we think bigger tires would definitely have helped, uh, the suspension was just limited. It's leaf spring. Um, overall, the electronics seemed to work really, really well. They were pretty smooth. Uh, reverse transitions, I, I don't know, maybe we just have a racer thumb or something that they're very jerky into reverse. Uh, a better radio with throttle exponential may smooth that out for us. You guys may be used to it, but you know, as you can see, most guys that are into racing don't use reverse, so it's a little brain uh, farting out there. Um, once we get through this section, uh, this was the cool part, climbing up, you know, it did pretty well. Um, and this is why we kind of tied it for third, is that even though it got stuck in a couple places, not every truck here actually surpassed every event here. Um, and so we had to grade them, you know, we couldn't really pick them a loser in this case, they're all pretty good. The last stage was a pretty steep incline, it's always hard to tell vertical uh, aspects on camera, but that's over 45 degrees. Uh, the motor in the front helps, you can see that the hard tires struggling for grip. These rocks had pretty high grip, it's at the beach, um, they got a lot of pores, so there's actually decent traction. This is where the TF2 kind of won our hearts back a little bit, because it actually did almost the best in the class because of that motor position. You can see it gets high centered a lot, uh, so it, it wins and then loses in the same battle. But uh, not bad for the little guy, not bad for somebody a little bit under equipped as specs. And third, third place goes to the Viterra Ascender. Here's a case of just being a little bit too vanilla. Viterra came onto the scene pretty strong, uh, launched really hard with some cool trucks and then kind of just disappeared. And that's not a fault to this truck because it's actually pretty well equipped. It's the cheapest of the bunch and it does pretty well overall. It just didn't shine in any way other than just being good at most everything. Um, in the beginner section, no problems. You can see the suspension, decent articulation, pretty soft, which we kind of liked. Um, on the transition here, uh, did probably one of the better uh, that we did. It hung really tight. Um, the nice thing about this body, and there's three body choices, we would have cho chose the one, uh, the smallest one because it became a problem later. Um, light body means it doesn't have high, high center of gravity, which means it doesn't want to always roll over. But overall, in the beginner section, did pretty well, um, even on that more difficult transition, which became a problem for, for more than we thought. So kind of ran through that, no problems at all, kind of what we expected. Big tires, long wheelbase. Um, stage two. The problem start that we didn't think would be that big of a problem, but that's a you know a five inch straight up vertical. Um, it's just testing the approach angle, uh, how much clearance you got. Uh, once you know we figured out that you got to kind of use that little uh, back wheel to get up on the little cheater spot there. It was you know pretty easy. Did a pretty good job. Starting the more advanced sections where we're testing out articulation and all that kind of stuff to see what it can do. You can see. Uh, good articulation, uh, still a little bit too stiff. Again, these are ready to run. They're not super tuned for any particular part. You can see when we started talking about the body of why, in hindsight, we probably would have chose a different one. Um, OJ used this on the freeway to hide, but he ain't going through the trails, and that's why we painted it red, I guess. Um, you can see on the, the bush turn here that uh, it wasn't that easy. It's a hard, pretty big rock on the right, and then a tight spot on the left. Uh, bumper, uh, this is where you can see where you see those bumpers with a lot of rake on them that will help. It kind of pushing into rocks where as if it had a nice bigger rake it might help launch it over. But eventually we got to rocking back and forth and rocking back on the trail. Um, we're going to come up to the spot again where we're going to see that the body uh, becomes the biggest detriment to this truck because it starts to hang up on stuff and it's probably part body and part bumper. Something that you can modify without any money but uh, it's something that you know affected the score pretty greatly and the, the clearance on those pumpkins seemed to catch a little bit more than others. Again, the throttle transmission, transition reverse forward, uh, not the smoothest. We can blame us a little bit on that, but it's just RTR electronics. They're not the best, but overall, each of these had brushed motors. They're pretty smooth, good throttle control on the end. But when you get stuck on stuff like this, we kind of look at it and go, you know, you know, we didn't have that problem with any other truck with the body and even the ones with the fuller bodies didn't. So, you know, a little bit knock on that, but you know, you get it off, you just gotta start muscling it around uh, and she's out. So tires are pretty soft. Uh, we think they're a little bit too hard to foam. If they were a little softer foam, they would get better grip. You can see that they don't really bend or, 
or mold to the tires as much as say the tracks or the axial, which would have helped it tremendously and maybe stood out a little bit more. Overall, very solid choice. That's why it's tied for third. It didn't stand out, but it stood out and that it's good. The final stage, uh, again, this is where the lighter body seems to help a lot. Good approach angle. Um, it tried and tried, but this is where the motor or more weight up front or heavier wheels would definitely. When you're lifting the front up, it just means, you know, the center of gravity is not in the right spot. You want angle, crawlers, scalers to have a lot of weight over that front because you're pulling it over things. So once we skipped the super extreme vertical and went around, uh, it did excel in this. Uh, probably better at the top of the class because it went up and really no drama other than trying to go up the steepest face that nobody could do. Um, and then when you drive onto the high center, make it look worse than it is. But overall, good. We'd be less surprised if Derek showed up with more hair than normal, but uh, we kind of thought that Traxxas was the winner coming into this. It's got way more technology than everybody. It's new, they've thought everything out, and it was really a good overall package, but you never know things until you drive them all together. It really rocked through stage one with no issues. You can see the suspension's nice and soft. The car likes to lean. The tires look like they're clawing at the earth, trying to rip the rock out of the ground. Everything you want to see in a good scaler crawler um, until we got to this transition. And then all of a sudden we're like, uh, oh, Tyson's going down. Um, that body is heavy. This truck is the heaviest, seven and a half pounds. And a lot of that is body weight. And that body weight is really high. And when it's really high and you're trying to transition 30 degrees uh, off camber, you can see that like a real truck, it will roll over pretty easily. Um, and we thought, oh my God, uh, Goliath down. But we recapped, uh, got, got it back on the thing and learned that you just gotta baby, baby this car a little bit more than you would because of that weight way up high. But, you know, we find flaws in all of us and flaw one was really early in this truck. Stage two, the harder section. This is the uh, cakewalk for this truck. You got the portal axles that give huge ground clearance. Um, same thing, little wheel on the side to get up and up and over the easiest of the bunch. Um, it's got locking, unlocking diffs. We didn't use it, just full lock everything. We're not playing with anything and just going through the rough stuff. When we get through this section, you can see that uh, articulation on this truck was some of the best. Um, that ground clearance and the movement was just so extreme on the truck. It's pretty awesome to watch. It handled the uh, bush turn. Uh, we can go even over crazier sections with this truck because it didn't get hung up on anything. But on the bush turn, just go over stuff. We didn't have to try to go around it. Um, and that's the big advantage to this truck, even with the heavy body. Um, you can see it tries pulling it over a lot, but it's got to turn into the, into the ground and, and muscle out, go right through the bush. And we even pick up a feather here, which is a nice feather in our cap. The Traxxas, uh, the speaking of the body, uh, it really hampered access to inside the body, even to turn it on and to unplug it, which is important. You really got to kind of pull and pry the body apart. It was kind of a pain in the butt. Um, one of the downsides is that nice looking body. Um, an upgrade would be a lighter body, maybe take some accessories off to reduce that upper weight. But part of this class is to look cool while you're doing it and, you know, throwing your keg and fake barbecue on top adds weight. But hey, you know, you look good doing it. Articulation, like I said, top of the class. Ground clearance, top of the class. Uh, it just felt really smooth and capable and confidence inspiring, um, which is why we're really surprised that it came in second, but there's a couple fatal flaws. Of, as we said, the body um, that really kind of knocked it down a little bit, and, you know. But this is why you do a shootout. When you run things together, you get to see who's got what and what the advantage of having uh, lots of tech or just lots of years under your belt, uh, which is better. A stage three, and another example of a heavy CG body and a tire hanging off the back, which sort of helped it from rolling over here. But you'll see again, um, this trying to go up the steepest section, uh, ran into a little bit of a problem and it rolled over again with the heavy body. Again, we knew this coming in and you know, our goal is to try to challenge the truck as hard as possible to see if it can do that. But when it can't, you have to do the reapproach and kind of take the uh, less steep path that everybody else had to take. Nobody actually got up the steepest face of that uh, of that challenge at all. They had to go around. Um, and it is a little bit off camber, so it's a little bit more tricky than it seems. So it's vertical, near vertical, and then uh, off camber. So 
a little bit of struggle getting up there, which is surprised because the tires are soft, um, but that's the weight balance that's off. And heavier tires are definitely gonna help all the trucks, not just this one. But once it got up, I mean, it just, there's no stopping this truck. If you're good at memory, you'll remember that we had four trucks and you haven't seen one yet. The Axial SEX-10 II with the 2000 Jeep body and Destroyer Gray, which is awesome color. Um, you're into Hellcats or Dodge, it's a great color. Um, it's the less tech, but it's the oldest truck here that's been doing this competition stuff forever. So uh, it's the veteran and it showed that all this technology can be overshadowed by uh, just keep designing and changing things and, and making things better. Uh, kind of walk through stage one, but again, every truck seemed to find a little thing to hang up on and the axial seemed to get stuck on some of the sharp edges on the pumpkin more than, than we think it should have. These tires were actually really good. Uh, we got a great angle on an approach here. Um, and it, the lighter body obviously doesn't make it want to roll over at all. Uh, that trailer hitch in the back, uh, why they'd put a big wiener out the back, we don't know, but uh, you can take it off. We should have because it kind of stuck. First place, that's right. Uh, so the step up that caused a little bit of problem for everybody, nobody can go straight up it. Um, you can see that the bumper on this truck did cause a little bit of a problem. It's very flat faced and blunt, so it didn't want to push up as much as we thought it would be. We had to use the, you can see the little rock that's a little bit uh, curved to get up there. And once it's up there and the tires up there, easy peasy, nothing going on here. Um, the suspension on this, this truck was very quiet and smooth. That's something that stood out uh, even, you know, when you're racing or any RC. The transmission and the gear driveline, very smooth, which means it's transferring power efficiently and, and not wasting it uh, with weird angles that make noise. Articulation, uh, you know, almost as good as the Traxxas, but not as good. Uh, it doesn't have the ground clearance because of the axle design, but definitely uh, and made it through here without a lot of problems. The bush turn was the problem for uh, most, uh, just because it was difficult. And again, that front bumper sticks out way too far for us. Um, a modification or something to change it, uh, or one with a little bit more rake to kind of let it lift over. Um, the tires, super grip. Uh, like we said, these are probably the best feeling tires. Uh, even though the tracks were a little softer and a little feel more grip, um, they ju these just stuck to the rocks and the sand. Uh, pretty good. Um, it will hang up, uh, like we did have a couple problems catching uh, the pumpkin, which we were really surprised because this has bigger tires and uh, it's just they hang down a little bit and, you know, luck of the draw, you find a little rock and you can see that it sticks. But overall, uh, the Axial proved that they've been doing this a long time and really developed this truck into something special. Uh, it's very simple and straightforward, huge aftermarket. You can modify the crap out of this to do whatever you want. Um, just no stopping it and, and it was really fun and, and again that smoothness was something that uh, was really surprising you can see a little bit of uh, diff grease coming out of there so make sure you check that when you get your RTR to make sure you're not leaking too much clean it off um, hard to beat this truck uh, it is a little bit pricier I mean you're almost at the same price point as the Traxxas it gives you a lot more technology so that's something to consider we don't consider that fifty dollars you know it's, it's a lot of money but you know when you're when you're driving five Six hundred bucks to to run. That fifty dollars is worth it to some and not to others. So um, easy. Stage two done. A little bit of hang up. No big deal. Um, again, we try going up the steepest part, and it shows that that uh, rear wiener or trailer hitch caused the problem because it did force it to roll over, which was really a surprise. But again, that's on the steepest one uh, approach. And once we went to the less steep angle. Um, the Axial did a, I, I think, almost as good as the RC four-wheel drive, but you can see the weight just a little bit more on the front would have kept that wheel down and made it better. But just go slow and let the wheels do the work and, and it gets up there and it was at the top of this class too. Overall, every car had a problem with some stage, but the Axial defined what it is to be a scaler. Do us a big favor, like, subscribe, go to our website, check it out because the magazine is there. You'll download it. You get 16 pages of this shootout. All the information is there. Do it now.